My name is Edward Whiffen. I am 73 years old. My name is Anne Whiffen mm -hmm. and I am 71. And my name is Leslie Nave and I'm 46. I started at Horton Colliery when I was 15. We got married in August 1966. Which mine did you start working on? Horton. Horton. Yeah. So here. Mm. Uh, was Eddie already in the mining industry when you met him? He was, yes. I started at Horton Colliery when I was 15. We're now standing in what used to be Easton and Colliery. Um, if you look, uh, around this area was the three shafts that used to take the miners down and all the outbuildings which now have all been demolished and it's made a, like a, uh, a park for people to walk through. Okay, and you talked about there was collieries all down the, the yes, beach. Yes, if, if you look to the south, mm -hmm. um, there was Horden and then further down was Easenden. To the north would be Seam and Vane Tempest and uh, Westow and Weymouth. So they're all coastal pits. Mm -hmm. So the, sh the seams used to go out as, as far as the eye could see out to sea. And of course inland was restricted by, i.e. Um, Peat Lee being built and all the other areas. So how many people were employed here? Uh, roughly between two and three thousand people uh, employed in East. And I mean, I would say 90 or 95 percent of the population of the, of the village worked in the mine or had something to do with the mines. Is there any commemoratives around here? Any sort of. There is uh, are, um, a monument with the actual the wheels of the, of the shafts. at Horn, at Easton and at Black Hall. And there's also a commemorative uh, plaque of the um, men that were killed at, on in, what was it, 80? No. I um, can't remember the, the date. There was a big explosion at Easton and uh, a lot of people were killed and it was devastating for the village itself. There wasn't many families that didn't have somebody involved in the actual pit explosion. What we're looking at here is one of the sets of the pulley wheels. There was two on each shaft and it used, the rope used to go around the pulley wheel, down the shaft, back out to the engine house where the, the gentleman that was sitting in the engine house used to lower the cage up and down the shaft. The most memorable moment is, I would think, when I had an accident down, down the mine and I was buried alive. He told me that he thought he'd see, in, seen and heard angels when he'd had his accident. So, that always sticks up here. Uh, as a result, I had a, head, a fractured spine, broken jawbone, broken cheekbone and lacerations. I think that would be the most memorable part of the mining. And his pit socks, probably. That's one of my biggest memories. The awful, stiff, black pit socks that we used to have drying around the house all the time. <laughs> the smell of them, the, the, they were just a strange texture because they were like rock hard. Um, it's just, yeah, childhood things. It was partly human and partly natural. Mm -hmm. uh, it was on a long wall face. And um, I, I was on Powell Oden and I was at the cold side of the face. And the machine started to cut further up the face and the vibrations broke the coal away and the coal fell on top of us. Um, how did the mining strike affect you and your family? Um, I would say it probably affected us less than a lot of people. Personally, I wasn't, on, I wasn't involved in the actual strike. We, as being a, an overman at the colliery, we were, had to keep the pit open. So we were doing 
um, shifts, so many shifts a week just to keep the pumps running in the colliery yards that, that men would have nowhere to go back to work to. From a personal point of view, you became aware that um, children were hungry at school. I'd just gone into the senior school at the time um, where you didn't get sort of a school dinner as such. You were more on the sort of grown-up canteen affair and you became very aware that some of the children didn't have very much in their packed lunches. Um, you noticed the children were um, after a period because the, the strike went on for kind of almost about a year, I believe, and right through the winter, you became aware that people um, weren't as clean as they used to be. To see um, workmates um, being physically abused on picket lines by the police, um, by having to be living in like what we would call a police state. That um, your every movement, even if you took your family for a ride in the car, the, the police would stop you and ask you where you were going. Uh, so uh, to me, it was actually an, a police state. We're now in Horden Welfare Park. Uh, until the mine was closed in 1985, thousands of Horden employers made contributions to, to, from their wages to actually keep the upkeep of this park. Um, Horden, as a, as a colony, was, was the biggest employer in the Durham County. 90% uh, of Horden's working population was employed at the mine. So were they fine with their money being taken out? Yes, they were fine because it was a, a pleasant place to come after you've worked down the mine in the dark to see flowers, etc. This is a statue put in place um, of, of a pitman with all the gear on, his, his knee pads and his bull pick in his hand, his lamp. And it was dedicated on the 21st of November 2015 by Horden, Horden's oldest living miner. Uh, as you notice, if you look, you can see on the left hand side of his upper torso, that the actual heart has been ripped out by this unforgiven Tory government. To the left here is the miners hall that was built out of the wages of the miners. This is the place where they used to have all the um, the meetings during the strike um, to let them know as to which area they're going to the, in the country to pick it. Um, we, were, we were thought that the police had inside information because every t everywhere that we decided to go in a meeting the police were always there when we got there so we thought there was somebody inside information or, or our places were bugged or our telephones were bugged. Now going along the streets there used to be the colliery houses and you can see by the, the actual state of all these houses that the the cost of the colliery closing and everything, all these houses now are, are really in a run-down state. Um, blame all this, I mean these were nip and clean when the people worked at the, at the colliery. So unfortunately this is, this is the, the result of the Thatcher government. I was just thinking as well, with Theresa May being in Parliament now, mm -hmm. Do you see any similarities from Thatcher and her? Because obviously she says that she's going to privatise the NHS to certain people. Do you think that she's possibly not working off Thatcher's morals, but kind of taking bits off Along her Along the same lines, mm -hmm. yes, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. yep. When Thatcher passed away, in Britain, there was, I mean, especially up here, there was almost like a celebration, you know. Um, the number one song at the time when she passed away was Ding Dong, The Witch Is Dead. As someone who was a child in the time and who wasn't affected like 100%, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. in that time, do you think that was kind of right to celebrate someone's death? Do you think that was a deserved kind of like emotion? I don't think it's right. But I can understand why people 
feel the way that they do. She, she died. She um, divided the country. She made it a place of, I'm all right, Jack, bother you. And she sort of created a society that if, if you had it, you kept it. And if you didn't have it, you just had to be in the streets. And I think that, that and it's, uh, to me, it's happening today that they're, they're looking after their own and, and not the ordinary working class. Um, I don't think the Tory party has ever been for the, the working class. But as far as Maggie Thatcher is concerned, I'm sorry, but uh, she's in a good place now. And that's it. Thank you very much.